Well, good morning, church. Thank you for joining us on our daily Devo. Today, we're in the book of Ecclesiastes. Have you ever heard of destination disease? If you haven't, it's basically this. It's where you think happiness is somewhere in the future. Happiness is when I finally get the job of my dreams. Happiness is when uh, you know, I get married. Happiness is when I have kids. Happiness is when my kids move out. Happiness is retiring with $5 million in the bank. Happiness is this. And the problem with destination disease is we always see our happiness, our fulfillment as somewhere out there, and we miss the ability to enjoy where we are. I think Solomon is someone who kind of shows the folly of that. See, for everyone who has destination disease, 95% of the people, uh, they'll never reach their goal. And they'll, at the end of their life, feel unfulfilled and feel their life was missing uh, because they didn't reach that destination. But about 5% of people reach the destination. Solomon was one of those. And they realized rather quickly these things they thought were going to bring them happiness really didn't. I mean, if you read the book of Ecclesiastes, you really need to read it in one setting. It's one of those books, if you take verses out of context, it almost can sound like you know Solomon didn't believe in God. But Solomon was chasing fulfillment and instead he talks about emptiness or the word vanity again and again. See, some people think they'll be happy when they have power and Solomon had ultimate power. He was the king. His word was law and it didn't bring him fulfillment. Some people think that happiness is pleasure, and Solomon said he didn't withhold anything from himself. If he wanted a food, if he wanted to purchase something, he had horses to race, he had chariots, he had a harem of hundreds and hundreds of beautiful women, and guess what? That didn't bring him happiness. You know, some people think it's riches. You know, if there was a Forbes magazine when Solomon was alive, he'd have been in the top five, maybe number one. He had more wealth than he could even count, but riches didn't bring him happiness. Some people think it's possessions, and he built beautiful palaces. He had wonderful things, and yet the possessions didn't bring him happiness. Some think it's fame, and Solomon was known worldwide. We read about you know Queen Sheba coming to see Paul, uh, Saul as he was dispensing wisdom and justice in his judgment. So he had those things, and all of those things he realized did not bring him happiness. As a matter of fact, we get towards the end of the book and he kind of brings it together and says, you know, in the last few verses of chapter 12, if you want fulfillment, if you want to honor God, if, if you want a good life, you need to do two simple things. He, he rolls it down to this, fear God, obey his commandments. And the fear of God is not in that, oh my goodness, God's going to get me. It's more of a reverent fear, kind of like I feared my dad, not, not because he's going to take me out, though he could have. It, it was because I respected him, I loved him, I did not want to displease him. And it's simply to do what you know you need to do. Now here's the sad thing as I read Ecclesiastes, that Solomon came to the right answer, and yet he didn't obey it. He died at the end of his life displeasing God, not, not fearing God and not following his commands. See, it's one thing to have knowledge, it's another thing to apply it. That's why James says, don't be a hearer of the word, and so deceive yourself, but be a doer of the word. See, it's not what you know, but it's what you do with what you know that really matters. And so let's learn from Solomon in a couple ways. Let's realize that power and pleasure and riches and possessions and fame, at the end of our life, those things aren't going to make us happy. But know that we lived a life in which we feared God and we obeyed Him. To know that we can look forward to standing before Him and, and hearing that, well done, my good and faithful servant. To understand that the most important thing you do in this life is make sure you're ready for the next. And so we have a connection to Christ. That's what's going to matter. But don't have this knowledge, don't attend church, don't go to a life group, don't read your Bible and be loaded with knowledge and yet like Solomon, not live a wise life. Here's the shame. He was the wisest man who ever lived and he died foolish in making bad choices. So thanks for being part of our daily Devo. Continue tomorrow and thanks for being on this journey with us.